Hello again. Um, I'm in quite a chirpy mood today because uh, it's my favourite time of year. And my favourite time of year, of course, is when I get to talk about the orbit and the various nerves innervating the extraocular muscles and also the sensory nerves. And today we are going to start by talking about the ophthalmic nerve and its branches into the orbit and we're going to go over them in a little bit of detail using a diagram that I have nicely prepared for you. So let's have a look at this. Here we've got an eyeball in the orbit and what we need to do to begin with is just draw on our uh, cranial nerve 5 coming in here. Our cranial nerve 5 as you know already is going to give rise to three divisions and one of them is going to go off down here like so and that's going to go through foramen ovale and of course that is V3 the mandibular division the other branch is going to go off in this direction that's V2 and that's the maxillary division that's going to go off and go eventually through the pterygopalatine fossa come into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and then eventually travel along a groove on the floor of the orbit to exit onto the maxilla by the infraorbital foramen and from there will supply the sensory territory for V2 over the face. The one we're interested in though is V1 and we're going to draw it on coming in here and we need to just erase a little part of this orbit so that we can make room for our superior orbital fissure. So Let's just draw it coming in like this and here we are. So this is our V1 and that of course is our ophthalmic division or our ophthalmic nerve. So before we get started um, we're just going to label this so we know what's what. So this is medial and this is lateral. and. The idea is that we're going to draw on the individual branches of the ophthalmic nerve and start to point towards um, the, the idea of parasympathetics and sympathetics coming into supplying the, the eye, but predominantly that we're going to be talking about the sensory innovation. So we're going to begin by talking about the first branch that tends to come off of the uh, ophthalmic nerve or division. and. This is called the nasociliary nerve and I'm going to be doing this in red. So I'm going to make a little key down here. I'm going to call that the nasociliary. Like that. So anything in red means that we're dealing with the nasociliary. So the thing to remember about the nasociliary is that he is going to pop along in a medial direction so he takes on a medial direction and he continues in a medial direction and eventually gives off a couple of nerves here which we'll just draw on and come back to and then continues in this direction like that out um, onto the face actually enters outside of the orbit to supply sensory uh, innovation to the medial and upper eyelids, parts of the eyelids, to the lacrimal sac and to part of the nose and so the nasociliary nerve here has um, innovation which continues as part of what's known as the infratrochlear nerve so it's the infratrochlear nerve and that's the direct continuation of it in here so Where this red arrow tip is here, this is the nasociliary terminal branch called the infratrochlear nerve. The named branches that come off before then, and they're branches that travel here into the ethmoid bone and travel down to supply sensory innovation into the nasal cavity, into the skin around part of the nose and into the anterior cranial fossa. This one is known as the anterior 
esmoid nerve in here or branch and this posterior one is known as the posterior ethmoid nerve or branch and the posterior ethmoid nerve or branch will supply the ethmoid air cells and supply the sphenoid sinus. So let's just recap, we've got a nasociliary nerve which is the first to leave V1 of cranial nerve 5. Let's just draw on cranial nerve 5 here and we can see it in red and it continues over to the medial side of the orbit to become the infratrochlear nerve but before then it gives off two branches one is called the posterior ethmoid nerve or branch and an anterior ethmoid nerve or branch we now need to go back to the origin of the nasociliary nerve and make sure that we pick up the fact that it gives off along its course something known as the ciliary ganglion and I'm going to draw that as a little ball in here and we'll colour that in red so you can see that quite clearly. What I'm also going to do on here is just draw on the optic nerve as well so the optic nerve is going to be like this and of course that's going to be the optic, optic canal in there. So our nasociliary nerve has something known as a ciliary ganglion just hanging off of it right at the beginning of, of where it branches from V1 and the ciliary ganglion is a parasympathetic ganglion that's where preganglionic parasympathetic nerves will synapse with postganglionic sympathetic nerves and they will travel into the eye in order to innovate two parts of the eye one is the ciliary body, which is part of the iris, which is involved in accommodation from long sight to near sight or vice versa. And also to the sphincter pupillae muscle in the iris, which constricts the iris for um, trying to let in a specific amount of light which is necessary for the conditions in which we're trying to view things. So that's our ciliary ganglion and we also need to draw on the nasociliary nerve if we follow it along its course it actually gives off what's known as long ciliary nerves. So these are long ciliary nerves coming directly from the nasociliary nerve and our ciliary ganglion gives off what's known as short ciliary nerves. Now parasympathetics always travel via the ciliary ganglion, this red ball, and the postganglionic fibres will travel in short ciliary nerves. The long ciliary nerves are for sympathetics to come and travel to the eye and they will be going to the dilator pupillary muscle in order to dilate the iris and so that's for the path of our sympathetic fibres. So the nasociliary nerve is quite complex really. It's predominantly a sensory nerve but it does have a parasympathetic ganglion and a route for parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves to travel. We must stress though, I think Ellie will be picking this up in future tutorials, that although parasympathetic fibres and sympathetic fibres travel through the nasociliary nerve as part of trigeminal, the origin of those fibres is not with the trigeminal nerve, it's with other cranial nerves, so we must bear that in mind. The cranial nerve 5 is the owner and keeper of all the parasympathetic ganglion, but it does not originate parasympathetic fibres from any of its own nuclei, so it does not generate parasympathetic fibres, it lets them travel along nerve fibres, sensory nerve fibres that it's laid down uh, in the face. So that's our nasociliary nerve. I now want to change colour and we're going to go to green for this one and for the green is going to represent the frontal nerve and this branch is going to come off and it's the largest branch and it's going to travel 
in this direction like this, it splits into two branches like this. And the one that continues directly, which um, comes out just superior to the eyeball itself, is called the supra orbital nerve. And this one over here, which comes off medially, is called the supra trochlear nerve. Okay, so the supra orbital is the one that is the direct continuation of the frontal nerve, and the su supra trochlear nerve comes off in a slightly medial direction. But this is a purely sensory nerve, and it travels between levator palpebrae superioris muscle, which is the muscle that uh, is controlling the upper eyelid and also between the fascia, the preorbital fascia of the roof. So it's the most superior nerve and it's probably the easiest nerve to see in the orbit because A, it's most superficial and B, it's quite large and central. So that is our frontal nerve. It's quite a simple nerve. It has a large coverage of sensory territory. The supertrochlear nerve innervates the conjunctiva it innervates the skin over the upper eyelid and the forehead, while the supraorbital nerve, which is the larger of the two, innervates the scalp all the way back to the middle of the head, actually all the way back over the forehead and all the way back to probably the middle of the scalp, the middle of the head. And it also innervates the upper eyelid and conjunctiva. So that's our frontal nerve. Now, the last nerve we need to draw on is the lacrimal nerve, and we're going to do that in a slightly yellow colour. So we'll just label our key down here. So this is lacrimal. Okay, and the lacrimal nerve is going to travel in a lateral direction. And it's going to travel like this along the lateral side of the orbit, and it travels along the upper border of the lateral rectus muscle. Now, I've not drawn on any muscles on this diagram. I think it would overcomplicate it at this stage, but just to let you know that it runs along the upper border, so it's quite superficial. The deepest of all of these nerves is the nasociliary, which is quite difficult to see. But certainly frontal, the one in green, the one I'm drawing now, the lacrimal, are very superficial nerves and uh, running where you can see them in the orbit from a superior view at least. So the lacrimal nerve is a sensory nerve that's going to the lacrimal gland. And I'm going to draw the lacrimal gland on like this little grey cloud at the top here. So that's our lacrimal gland. And the lacrimal nerve doesn't give off any branches and travels directly to the lacrimal gland as a sensory nerve. But as well as supplying the lacrimal gland, it also supplies the conjunctiva laterally and the lateral part of the upper eyelid. Now, on the face of it, that doesn't seem too bad. We've got basically all of our sensory territory covered via V1 from the nasociliary, the frontal and the lacrimal nerve. And we have a little bit of complication going on with the nasociliary nerve because of this um, ciliary ganglion and parasympathetics and sympathetics. I'm afraid there's a little bit more um, complicated stuff to come with the lacrimal nerve. It may seem quite simple on the face of things, but the lacrimal nerve also has sympathetics and parasympathetics traveling to it because they need to get to the lacrimal gland. And we do need sympathetics and parasympathetics innovating the lacrimal gland because we need secretory motor fibers um, going to it. So what happens is that there is a communication somewhere between the maxillary nerve and the ophthalmic nerve and the lacrimal nerve. And this allows parasympathetic fibers to travel the lacrimal gland. Now, as I said before, the trigeminal nerve doesn't have any parasympathetic fibers of its own. So these parasympathetic fibers have come from a different cranial nerve and what they've done is that they have hitched a ride on 
the trigeminal nerve fibers to reach the lacrimal gland and the sensory nerve that they've hitched a ride on happens to be the lacrimal nerve. So we must remember that the parasympathetic fibers traveling to the lacrimal gland originate with a different cranial nerve but travel in trigeminal nerve fibers or with trigeminal nerve fibers I should say. So we'll just finish by mentioning the two important cranial nerves here that do carry parasympathetic fibers. Certainly the ones that travel, certainly the, the um, cranial nerve that influences the nasociliary nerve in terms of pupillary constriction and accommodation is the oculomotor nerve. So we associate the oculomotor nerve with the nasociliary and the parasympathetic fibers traveling with the lacrimal nerve to the lacrimal gland are associated with the facial nerve. So we associate the facial nerve as parasympathetic fibers traveling with the lacrimal gland. Sympathetic fibers enter the head by traveling with the internal carotid artery and they work as a plexus around the artery and then distribute themselves in a similar way through the trigeminal nerve fibers to innovate structures um, with sympathetic fibers. We must remember that all sympathetic fibers inside the head are postganglionic, but parasympathetic fibers inside the head can be either preganglionic or postganglionic. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.